Load development matters. In this video, I want to share with you a fundamental change in my philosophy around load development with some concrete results. We're also going to load some amazing 6.5 Creedmoor ammo as an output of that with these awesome treble dies for our Samson and Hammerhead 6.5 Creedmoor rifle. Get ready. Gavin Gee here from ultimatereloader.com. I have been having an amazing week of breakthroughs with reloading and shooting. Let me show you what happened using these treble dies and some awesome components and the rifle that we recently built here on the channel. This is our 6.5 Creedmoor PRS rig with the new Samson stock from Foundation, Hawkins bottom metal, bat hammerhead action. This thing is an absolute tack driver. Let me show you that shooting right now. So it's pretty amazing to have some frustration with a rifle and with a load, to know that there's more on the table with precision. You just know inherently that those group sizes can get better. And here's what I've come up with lately. A lot of it comes down to the specific bullet skew. That's right. I've found that a particular barrel will have a preference for a very particular bullet. And what was interesting about this experiment in load development was what happened when I moved from the 153 grain Hornady A tips, 6.5 millimeter, down to the 135 grain A tips, right? Same bullet, same basic shape, but a different weight made a huge difference with what I was able to achieve with this rifle. And I didn't have to go through an extensive load development process. It was switched from 153, random load that I had picked in terms of charge weight, right? We're using H4350, Lapua Brass, and you know, going from that 153 to the 135 took the group from, let's see what this is, right? This is right here, about a little over an inch, 1.065, right? Inch and a sixteenth. And that went down to 0.396 inches, right? Pretty amazing difference. And same rifle, same bench rest, same shooting session. And what you really want is something that's gonna be consistent from group to group and from day to day. So the next day I shot multiple groups. <laughs> wow. And the results were absolutely amazing. The next two groups that I shot with the rifle measured 0.337 for five shots at 100 yards and 0.320 inches for five shots at 100 yards. So here we have three groups in a row that are in the threes, right? And after using the Velociradar to capture our velocity, we also have an SD that's 10.7. So that's right hovering on the edge of that single digit SD. Velocity was a little low, 2,670 feet per second approximately. But like a lot of PRS shooters, I don't claim to be a PRS shooter. I don't do it nearly enough, right? You'll favor that lower node, some people refer to it as. You back off from maximum velocity 
you get longer barrel life, you get a little bit less recoil, and sometimes things stabilize just a little bit. I'm sure we could push this up to 2,800 feet per second, something you know like that. But because we have laser range finders, and you know because you know we can range the targets, and because we can so accurately calculate our dope, the difference in 150 feet per second in velocity is not as meaningful as having a load that you know is going to shoot exceptionally well, and you're also balancing the trade-offs of barrel life and also recoil as well. So what's interesting is just this week, I experienced the same thing with a 22 Creedmoor rifle. It was not grouping, it was grouping over an inch. And then all of a sudden I found literally the magic bullet. The magic bullet in that case was a 75 grain Hornady Amax, an older bullet. It did not like 80 ELDMs for instance. And it didn't like a bunch of other things. Once I got into the 75 grain Amax, I shot three groups in a row and they were all great. So this, you know, in, is the essence of my new low development strategy is really focus on that bullet skew. Not necessarily the type or the line within a manufacturer's lineup, but literally the skew, like going from the 153 down to the 135. Okay, so that was pretty exciting and I'm really encouraged and I'm loving this load. Uh, next, I wanna to talk to you about the gear and guide you through the process of some Precision 6.5 Creedmoor loads. So first off, we've done a lot of reloading here on the channel with treble dies. Everything from 50 BMG to 6.5x47 to 6x47. We just did a story recently with another custom rifle build and that was using the new 6x47 dies from treble. And I'll have to say, again, the results were absolutely amazing. The difference here is that we've got a neck only sizer in the lineup. So here we have the full length sizer for 6.5 Creedmoor. We've got the neck only sizer for 6.5 Creedmoor and we've got the bench rest cedar. And much like we did in the video showing 6x47, we're gonna talk about the bullet seating stems and how picking the right one can make a big difference. But with this lineup of dies, it gives you a bunch of different options. The quality is absolutely exceptional and that's important when you don't want to leave anything on the table quality press quality dies quality components when you consider the cost of compromising even if it's you know something like losing a match or having to take another trip to the range or just getting ready to pull your hair out because you're not sure exactly what the problem is you know in my book it absolutely makes sense to shoot quality rifles use quality components and reloading gear and then you can really focus on what matters, right? Some of these load development parameters like what I just talked about with bullet skews and bullet weights and that sort of a thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of walk through each of these dies, getting them set up on the press and then we'll load a few rounds of ammo. And uh, hopefully that helps illustrate to you the process that uh, I use for these types of loads. So in our Treble dies A to Z in-depth video, we go into all of the different options. If we take this neck sizer, for example, there's different bushings that we can use, that kind of thing. For this setup, I'm just gonna keep it super simple. And what we'll look at is the protrusion of the decapping pin, right? We have to pull this collar down and I'm gonna go until I have not quite a quarter inch, something like that. I'm sure someone can tell me what that is in the metric system. <laughs> and we're just gonna take the die and screw it all the way down to the shell plate. Now, if we wanted a different level of neck tension, we would need potentially a different you know, bushing. Lock that down. And then for each of the cases, I'm just gonna give it a very slight wipe. What we'll do is we'll neck size five of these and then we'll do five with the full length sizer, something like that. Right now I'm using full length sizing for the ammo, all the results that I just uh, mentioned because uh, I'm concerned with feeding and successive reloadings and things not getting sticky. But if you're looking for maximum precision, sometimes neck only sizing is something that uh, is worth investigating. So we'll get the inside of these case necks real quick. And we'll know about the neck tension equation when we get to seating our bullets. 
Ah, very nice. We could also use something like the amp press to take a look at the profile. We could use something like Forster's neck tension gauge to gauge it. Use a little bit more inside the neck lube there, it looks like. Looks good. Okay, on to the full length sizer. We're gonna start again with the, uh, the protrusion of the decapper and just give that a good look here. Not quite a quarter inch, make sure we're away from the web of the case with that expander ball section of the interior of the die. Take our 10 millimeter wrench, lock that down just a little bit. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the pull stud clamp here, index over to the next position. And this time we're gonna just send it all the way to the top of the shell holder. And one thing that you're gonna to wanna to take uh, into close consideration, careful consideration when you're setting up your full length sizer is to take a look at shoulder bump. For a bolt action, I'm looking at one and a half to two thou shoulder bump, something like that. And there's multiple ways to check and verify. You can use a case gauge with a depth checker. You can use a comparator, a shoulder comparator. Uh, and then sometimes what I like to do is size a piece of brass and then put it directly into the chamber of the rifle and then close the bolt just to make sure that things are happy there. Okay, I've already applied some lube to these cases, both on the outside and on the inside. Ah, yes. All right. Make sure that we're decapping there. Looks good. All right, so we have some full length sized cases. And we have some neck only sized cases. Next, I'm gonna do some priming. Okay, so all of our cases are primed. I wiped the excess lube off the cases and that means we're ready for powder. Here we're using 40 grains of H4350. That worked out superbly with these 135 grain Hornady A-tip bullets. So I'm going to go ahead and charge these cases. This RCBS Charge Master Link has just really been a workhorse in the shop lately. It is affordable, has Bluetooth connectivity, and is really fast, hence you seeing it in so many videos recently. That completes our powder charging, and that means we're ready to set up the bullet seeder die. So when we talk about setting up the bullet seeder, this is the bench rest seeder from Treble, we're really gonna wanna focus on that seeding stem, right? So I'm gonna take a 19 millimeter wrench there. We can take the top off, right? And this kind of mandrel assembly here has the seeder stem that you can just loosen with a wrench, that's a 10 millimeter. I need something like a 5.5 for this. There we go. It cracks and I have a very simple way for evaluating the different kind of seating stems and that's to take each one and it, do you see how that kind of rocks on there? It's like the tip of the bullet is hitting and it's just, it's not even really contacting. Angle's wrong, diameter's wrong, depth is wrong kind of any of those sorts of things. These three I found uh, were a pretty good fit. And what I'm looking for is how it lands on the O-drive of the bullet and then just how it fits. I don't, I don't want any wobble and I don't want it to feel like it's cutting into the O-drive if it's got you know too steep of an angle. So after looking at those options, I decided that this particular seating stem felt like it wasn't grabbing the O-drive, cutting into it and no uh, perceptible rocking really. So hence making the decision to use that particular stem. They just screw right on. Let's go ahead and 
tighten that again. I need the smaller wrench here. And uh, makes it really easy. Um, put that right back into the die. Take the larger mandrel nut here and give that a little tighten with our 19 millimeter wrench again, right? Now we can take a 10 millimeter wrench and crack the seating stem and just back it off. We wanna start with it backed off. And I have a dummy cartridge here. So this was from the previous session of ammo I was loading with these dies. Wanted to kind of show the setup process yet again, even though we did that in our treble video. Uh, I'm just gonna start with cranking this down. so that it hits the shell holder, that should get the actual die body where it needs to be. And then this load called for 2.80 inches, plus or minus a couple thou. So that we're 2.802, that's plenty good. We have plenty of headroom in our magazine for that. So we'll just go ahead and put that in and then crank down the seating stem with the ram up until we can feel it hit the bullet and compress slightly. And then we're gonna take our 10 millimeter wrench here and just snug that so that that doesn't move while we're going through the reloading process. Now we can take, these are our neck sized. Do some seating and see where we're at with our bullet seating depth here. Cartridge overall length is 2.802. How about that? Same exact as last time. So we'll go ahead and seat these. There we go. This ammo is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna load a whole bunch of it and I'm gonna really enjoy this new rifle I recently built. This is kind of a look into the process, uh, a little bit of a philosophical change around load development, focusing on bullet selection. What I'd like to know from you is, what have you learned about load development? What are the big factors that you've acknowledged when you've gone through different powders, different primers, bullet seating depth, whatever it is that has made a big difference for you? Also, have you seen a difference in reliability and precision between neck only sizing and full length sizing? Drop a comment and we'll start that discussion. Don't forget, we've got our full treble overview video. These treble dies are available at Creedmoor Sports exclusively here in the United States. If you're in Europe, contact your local retailer or contact treble. Yeah, I'd love to know your experiences and just discuss what's been working for you and what hasn't. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. Thanks again for watching.